Hello, hello, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another episode of your maybe favorite, but at least within your top five favorites podcast, <laughs> Happy and Holy, with your bestie co hosts, the love of my life, Wenny. I was like, get on YouTube. Way? Which direction? Get on YouTube is so you can see to see us PowerPointing. We don't know which direction is. I actually don't know my left from my right. It's because our our videos could be mirrored. I change mine so that when I actually point, it goes to the right way. <laughs> that is so smart. <laughs> um, and your other co-host, that would be me. <laughs> I'm Amy. <laughs> That would be me. Me, the ravishing creature sitting before you. If you're the love watching. of my life. The ravishing creature. The ravishing white passing. <laughs> so, so why are we here? Oh, we're here. Because mm -hmm. in the words of our favorite Bulgarian theologian, George and Banov. <laughs> the world wants you happy, but not holy. Religion wants you holy, but not happy. But Jesus came to make you burn. <laughs> yes. Man, that's what it's like. That's what it feels like to be on the other end of that. I was like chomping at the beat at the bit. I was like, to make you both, to make you both, to make you both. <laughs> oh, Jesus came to make you both. That last sentence is such a sigh of relief, especially yeah. if you live anywhere where the religious spirit or attitude presides. It is an attitude. Mm -hmm. That's a whole too. Let me tell you, I have met many people in ministry, demon free people who still have the mindset of the religious spirit. Not the and religious they don't have spirit. spirit. They don't have a spirit. They just have the mindset. Oof. That's true, though. Yeah. It proves if you believe lies. You still aren't free. That's true. It's more than just a spirit. Y'all got to stop putting spirits on everything. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's stupidity. Sometimes it's mindsets. Sometimes it is an attitude. Sometimes it's just a mood. Mm -hmm. You don't got to be a spirit. And regardless of what causes the mood, the mindset, the belief system at the end of the day the truth sets you free every mm -hmm. time every time every time mm -hmm. the truth will set you free yeah it don't have to be because if you put a spirit on everything okay this is what immaturity does when you slap a spirit on everything then people feel like everything needs to get delivered and out here being in the south is rough out in these streets i've seen somebody try to cast a demon out of a baby and now, come on, common sense in the kingdom. For all you mothers out there, don't let anybody be praying prayers of your baby with spirits that they don't have. You have authority. You're the mama. You're the papa. But yeah, immaturity will make people believe that there's demons in everything. The, maybe he's just hungry, okay? Have you ever been hungry? Have you ever done something that you haven't thought, like, have you ever done something that you didn't think you would do? that you did because you're hungry. Sometimes you just need a Snickers. You don't need deliverance. Oof. And sometimes maybe don't be bringing that up because it's not what the Lord is doing or not using you for. I just. That too. Because we want people to stay free. 
that too. Not That's just nice. have a little demonic showdown entertaining. And if we want people to stay free, once again, we need truth. <laughs> and so there's a certain type of mindset that you need to cast out demons. It's not mm-hmm. in the prayer and fasting because some demons get casted out not through prayer and fasting. And so it can't, that's prayer and fasting is not always the formula. They're helpful. They're supplemental, but it's more about mindset and mindset is authority. And I mean, we can walk down that road later, but authority matters. Ooh, check that out on the merch website. Check that out (laughs) under merch on our website. Authority matters. Matters. Pretty soon we'll be wearing our own merch, but authority matters, period. Period. Yeah. Definitely you can see that. Uh, Even in the difference between the way the disciples moved when they were under Jesus and using his authority as disciples versus them in Acts. Oh, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. Oh my gosh. I feel. I was like, like say it, say it. Say it. <laughs> Friendship soul tie strong. It's, it's strong. It's strong. <sighs> strong in this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I don't even know how we got there, but. Welcome to the Happy and Holy Podcast. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, YouTube, wherever podcasts are listed, we are there. Especially check us out on YouTube. Hello, YouTube family. This is us waving to our YouTube family because they like to see us. Or maybe you're just a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. Like I like to watch. I got YouTube playing in the background right now. I like to just have YouTube going. And so if you're somebody who's like visual, YouTube is pretty cool. If you're somebody who just, you want to listen to us on the go. I also am a podcast junkie when I'm driving. And so we're with you right now on your commute. We're with you right now on your walk. If you're cooking and you just like to listen to podcasts, we're there with you too. We're just here. And so thanks for however and wherever you're listening from. We love the support hey our last episode um well maybe it'll be a couple episodes back now by the time we're recording this but it was the satan con coronation and critical thinking man it that kind of that accelerated pretty quickly so thanks for checking that out so quickly and um we had a question about the website which we can confirm that it is live and running please visit us at happyandholyco.com. Make sure you remember it's happyandholyco.com. And I can assure you that when you go to that location, you will find our website. Because let me tell you, I worked so hard to get that to work. She did. She did. Do this thing. All right. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that, and then let's show this. Mm-hmm. Happyandholyco.com. There it is. So there it is. Happy and Holy Co. I just checked it out like an hour ago, and so share the website with your friends. Jamie did. She worked really hard to be like, "Yo, we paid for this domain." We want to see it working, okay? I talked and, to so um, many customer service reps so you can be assured that they help me figure this out. <laughs> All of them in somewhere in Eastern Europe were really helping me out. Praise God. And, and it worked. And um, as always, happyandholyco at gmail.com is our email. Hit us up there. Um, let us know your questions, your complaints, so we can hit the trash button and <laughs> comments for anything you would like to hear, like to see, like us to cover. Um, we're here to serve you. Mm-hmm. We are here for you guys. We're just here on assignment. Ooh, charismania language. We are here on assignment to be helpers of your joy. Not to lord over your faith, but to be helpers 
of your joy. And where can you find that in the Bible? Ooh, 2 Corinthians 1, 24. Look it we up. Can, yeah, we look it up. Look it up. Whatever translation you want. But we are here. This is that's who we are. We are helpers of your joy. Hence, the Happy and Holy podcast. Mm-hmm. To be helpers of your joy. Okay, I'm going to read the... I'm going to read the complete Jewish because we like to find the verses where it talks about happiness. Okay. Happiness. We love to find the verses that talk about happiness. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people like to like trash happiness. This is why we do the happy and holy podcast. What are you talking about? Happy and holy. God cares more about your holiness than your happiness. I just feel like I need to bring this up again. I brought it up. I can't remember what episode I brought this up, but I talked about joy being a humble choice to make in your emotions and happiness is definitely also humble because how often do we see people want to be like, oh, get back to work, get to like the, like back to basics and get to like toiling away at the gospel. The honeymoon's over. Yeah. And there's this attitude of like I have to do work for Christ to be effective in the kingdom Mm -hmm. and I have to earn whether that's the salvations that I earn and then it's like you're approaching evangelism with works and not with love and loving the people that you're reaching but like treating it like it's a job and everything in the kingdom starts to become a a works-based feeling and situation which not only is ineffective, but also lands you in pride because it stops being about Jesus and starts being about you and your efforts. And that's a very dangerous attitude to have. And I think we need to talk about how it's actually not dangerous to be in joy and levity and happiness, Mm. but actually dangerous to be in this attitude of pressure upon yourself because happiness doesn't lead to pride but works does Oof, that's so true and the lord rejects the proud Moses, is baby. Humble. that's right so we got to get serious about this joy thing we 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 need to get serious about joy. I've heard a wise man once say, I think it's that Bulgarian theologian you were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Heard a wise man once say that joy is heaven's most serious business. He really is. I'll have to say. And need us remind you that a grumpy Christian is a terrible witness. Mm-hmm. And so... We need, you need to humble yourself and get happy. Mm. (laughs) Okay. And look out for our humble yourself, get happy t-shirts coming soon. Loading. (laughs) Currently. So I'm going to read first Corinthians. Nope. I'm going to read second Corinthians one twenty four. Okay. In my complete Jewish. And then Jamie, you pick whatever, whatever translation you want to read from. Go for it. Okay, I'm doing the Don. I didn't even realize. I wasn't even trying to do the Don, but he's like, he does the little. Um, I I just felt the spirit of Donald Trump just come on me. <laughs> um, whatever translation you want to read from, have at thee. But I'll read from the complete Jewish, and then we'll we'll move on. Okay, reminding you, we are not here. Okay to tell you what to think, but how to think. That wasn't in the Bible. That was, that's the word of Lenny. Okay. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Second Corinthians 124. We are not trying to dictate how you must live out your trust in the Messiah for in your trust, you are standing firm rather We are working with you for your own happiness, your own happiness. Don't let people tell you God cares more about your holiness than your happiness. 
He's in both. Amen. Um, I've got the New English translation over here or the NET as it is abbreviated. Same verse. I do not mean that we rule over your faith, but we are workers with you for your joy because by faith you stand firm. By faith. By faith, okay? By faith. By faith. So we're here. We're here to be helpers of your joy. And through that, we have the cultural commentary, the theological commentary, the doctrinal commentary. And um, it is in that the truth will set you free. Why? Why do you care about what's going on in culture? Oh, like you girls, why are you all just gossiping about celebrities? And how could you? Listen, you need to be made aware of what's happening in the world Mm -hmm. because as we as things are just getting wild okay it's getting it's getting rough in these streets and as every preacher will tell you every decade okay we're in the end times okay there will be wars and rumors of wars and so in that y'all must be made aware of everything as i talked about a couple episodes ago a wise man once said And when it's a wise woman, I will give the credit to the wise woman. We are thankful for the wise woman in our life. A wise man once said that you got to preach with the newspaper in one hand, Bible in the other. And it's in the Bible that you can prophesy anything that's in that newspaper. Okay? The Bible is your roadmap. You need to know the current events. We are not doing the world any good by being ostriches and sticking our head in the sand because we've been giving authority and dominion. And what king who has dominion never travels his land? He will always travel his land. You know why? Because he doesn't travel his land with fear because he has dominion. That's his kingdom. We are little kings and little priests Mm -hmm. in the kingdom. When did we get, Jamie, when did we get authority? When, when we give in, Dominion. Um, that would be upon Christ's resurrection and ascension. So mm-hmm. post post ascension, um, and then Holy Spirit, probably uh, probably actually around Pentecost would be the exact timing. If you want to get down to the actual moment where it switched, come on, Pentecost. Uh, the actions that led to it, the the actual work getting done would be the part where Jesus uh, was crucified and then was under the earth um, for those three days, um, absolutely unloading on the devil and then being resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit and then after chilling on earth for a bit, ascending to the right hand of the father. Mm. And then when he sent the comforter, that Ooh. would be, that would be what led to that. But really Ooh. like the moment of like, Oh, now we have authority. That would be Pentecost. That would be Pentecost. That's right. He said, do not leave until you receive power. <laughs> power from on high and that power whoosh, 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 fire emoji everywhere whoosh, mm-hmm. um that power came and we were given dominion that those who may be wondering when did we lose dominion well it happened when adam and eve did the little mm-hmm. deed mm-hmm. Of handing it over to satan okay through the fall, we had lost dominion and had no authority. Jesus, as Jamie, so brilliantly eloquated, it was given back to us through Jesus. His death, burial, and resurrection has commissioned us. It's qualified us. It's knighted us. And now it has sent us. So, 
we have authority here as children of God, as co-heirs, okay? I know some of you guys listen like, like to listen to doctrine that puts you down. Mm-hmm. You like to listen to doctrine that makes you insecure. But we're here to tell you <laughs> that you've been given dominion and authority. Little kings and little priests. First Peter. Did you find it before me? You can read it. Um, I unfortunately <laughs> the page I have it on wait, it was the NIV, and I don't like that version. Let me let me just switch with that. Uh, <laughs> oof. Let's do let's do NASB. But you let's are <laughs> but you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh my gosh. I love that. I'm going to read the KJV because Mm. there's a word in there that I absolutely adore. Wow. But ye. Ooh. Ye. (laughs) but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation okay a holy nation remember happy holy okay 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 the next, the next line is a peculiar people. Ooh. We're a peculiar people. Okay. Be weird. It's be so weird for important. Jesus. It's so important to be strange. <laughs> need you to get serious about this and start dressing a little more different. You know just a little different um peculiar by definition is like strange odd unusual uh peculiar some people like to call it special so i'm just saying in the in the king james okay and i know y'all in the south love the king james up in the north too okay this isn't an anti-south this isn't an anti-south um podcast we just both happen to live in the south from the north (laughs) in the south but i'm just saying y'all love your kjv you do but it says we're a peculiar killer. You're a peculiar people that ye should shoo, shoo forth. What does shoo mean? S H E W. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it's an old fashioned spelling of show. Oh. That's cute. <laughs> okay. Um, that ye should shoot. Ye should shoot forth the praises of whom hath called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past, we not a people, but now are a people. Listen to me right now. You, those who know Jesus, okay, this only... This only applies to those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Messiah, your rescuer, your deliverer. For those, this applies to those people. You, I'm, I'm gonna have to, I have to find a verse. It says, but now, It says, which in time past, you were not a people, but now, but are now. Okay, let's get Pentecostal. Turn to your neighbor and say now. (laughs) But are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. So I'm just saying, 1 Peter 2.9 tells you all this beautiful, this beautiful language of just telling you who you are in Jesus now. Okay, so... The whole point an hour ago that we just made is um, you now have authority, dominion here, here, in Christ, here, in this like 
realm of the natural you are a supernatural being peculiar you're weird be strange be odd stop being neat okay the fact that we have a spirit that dwells in us and we believe that we are co-seated in heavenly places living in a spiritual realm two places at once we we have some unusual beliefs okay so with our unusual beliefs we need to be an unusual people Mm -hmm. it's okay to be strange absolutely be odd when everyone else walking around earth is just in a old Adamic spirit walking around only in one place at a time when we're in two places at once when my ass which is seated in heavenly places is looking down at me down here And I have the option of being present in the, in the seat that is next to Jesus. I should utilize that. And I think this is something that Christians really need to do better and more often. But we, if we have the option of being seated up there and being above the issues that are down here. Why are we trying to solve problems or think from down here like everyone else when we have like literally the biggest advantage over everyone? Just get into your spirit and rise up above all this and see your ass down next to Jesus and talk things over with him and look at things from his perspective because you can. It's true. He's down, down, up, down, A, B, X, Y, down, down, up, over, over, right. That's your cheat code in the spirit, all right? It's, we need to get used to stepping into that. We have something that the whole world does not have Mm -hmm. access to. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a reason why we're peculiar people. Holy nation out there. I don't feel holy. Well, you can't worship the Lord in your flesh and your feelings. He said spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. So get in line with the truth and um, get in touch with your spirit. Um, How did we even get, we don't, we don't usually get this deep in theology. This We, We didn't, we went straight out the gate into, into the theological part of our personalities. Oh, we dove in. We, we dove in. Sorry um, for those of us that got, those of you that got used to seeing us really <laughs> pop culture heavy and were like, I like this podcast. This, this, it's a package deal. It's a package. I know. Got to take it as we are. Um, Jesus likes us that way. <laughs> um, there was, a, there was a point I was going to make about that, but yeah, usually we don't get this deep. Oh, this was my point. Usually we don't get this deep this early, but we were getting tossed in sauce before we hit record. Just yeah. praying in spirit. It's not unusual, but we were, you know, hey, we were we were kind of in it. This is what you do with your bestie. This is true. You get it's freaky true. in the spirit. It's what you do. And if you are a first time listener, we do. We we freaking deep in the spirit. If you're a first time listener, um, this is the Happy and Only podcast. This is our phone call turned podcast where jamie and i have tried our best to condense our five to four four to five hour conversation into what we try for what we aspire for is like a 90 minute podcast (laughs) somehow somehow every time it always goes two hours we're trying our best i know some of y'all are like look i love y'all but two hours is a little much i'm sorry we're sorry okay sometimes man's is knocking on my door are you still talking to J- yes yes i am my roommate's like i miss you and i'm like i know i've been seeing you we just keep missing each other it's we know exactly what it is she knows exactly what's going on she's like oh are you talking to Wendy? are you talking to Wendy? yeah yes i am and people you probably are wondering like how how does someone have four to five hours to 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 just chat with their best friend you don't know what we accomplish 
while we're talking. I will go to the store. I will clean the kitchen. I will be getting work done. I will send emails. I'll get a workout in. Like Jamie too. Like we we are. Multi- I'll be making a TikTok. I'll be at work writing an email. I'll be lifting weights. We just we multitask is what we do. It's what we do. Okay. Sometimes it's four to five hours uninterrupted. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to jump off for a work call. Sometimes I got to jump into Zoom. But we we get it in, okay? Mm-hmm. And when we don't, it feels weird. We are not well when we don't get our four or five hours in. Yeah, it's just... In the same way that I'm sure you feel off when you didn't get to the gym in the last day or this the, today or the last couple of days, that's how we feel when we don't talk to each other for four or five hours every day. And people... I'm about to go there Um, because I I feel your judgment. I feel it already (laughs) transcending from the present to the future. I feel it already. (laughs) People who don't know how to have healthy relationships, people who don't know how to function in community and be covenanted friends, people who don't know how to have healthy soul soul ties will look at this and say codependency. Mm. however i am codependent on jesus facts i am dependent on him i'm auto dependent i'm not even codependent it's just please take the wheel um this is what you do when you do life but someone that you love it's weird how do you how do you just not like this is we do life like this is what it looks like now when it gets unhealthy i know people have had unhealthy relationships looks like hey you did me wrong one time and that's it you're dead to me it's weird also when you don't know how to have a healthy soul tie because people only think that soul ties are demonic or soul ties are evil um this is what i was talking about earlier with immaturity immaturity in the kingdom will demonize everything Mm -hmm. to the pure everything is pure read your bible um soul ties Healthy soul ties, Songs of Solomon. Healthy soul ties, Jonathan and David. Healthy Mm -hmm. soul ties, Jesus and John. Healthy, okay? Don't let, don't let what doesn't belong um, in the kingdom have authority in your life. So when it comes to how do I have good relationships, look at biblical examples. You can have these, I don't think it looked I don't think culturally it was really normal for John to be having his head in Jesus's bosom. Like, just come on, let me in there. Let me mm." like, I don't think that was like normal, but he did it because he was so in love. And so is Jamie my savior? No, but I really like the Jesus that's in her. Thank you. I really do. Thank you. Really do. And let me just say, Holy Spirit flows out of you so purely, and it is because of your healthy heart and your maturity. (laughs) And that's so rare. You are so rare. And that's why I give you as much of my day as you will allow me to take. (laughs) (laughs) I know some days it's like, I only got five minutes, girl. I got five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's, uh, this was a really long monologue really was um i i don't think i'm sorry but let's quickly <laughs> transition and what's that it was quality it was quality i know you see we just kind of we snuck some theology in there and, and, well you know all right let's uh transition to really quickly to did you hear all right jamie yeah. Did you hear? Tell me. Um, well, Elon Musk yeah. has just hired a new CEO. And this is of Tesla? Of Twitter. Of Twitter. Okay. Twitter. Yeah. It was a woman. Okay. As far as we can see, no fuddy-duddy. Like, I mean, I haven't checked, but I didn't see any, like pronouns in her bio like all the stuff for her. um let's i forget this girl's name it's like linda something latino um but 
she came from NBC. So, um, Ooh, I've yeah. worked in NBC and let me tell you unpleasant atmosphere spiritually. Yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, I yeah. don't remember what NDAs I've signed to be honest right now, but I feel like I'm safe to just say that that studio feels far nor- more nefarious than any other. And I've been to like every TV studio in New York, um, every network, every major network. And I've always been like, Oh, NBC, that's the nefarious one. Yeah. I think NBC was one of the big, did you see the out of the shadows documentary? Yes. Yeah, NBC was one of the big companies in that, like... Well, they're Rockefeller. Tell it, tell it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I, I, don't, I don't blame you. Um, so Elon Musk has just named a new chief executive of Twitter. Just over six months. Only six months. I feel like he's been, like, doing this thing for years now. But just over six months after his controversial takeover of the social media company... So he hired a um, a woman named Linda Yacarino, uh, former head of advertising for NBC. So she's going to oversee the business operations because Twitter has not been very profitable in the past couple of years. Um, they've been struggling to make money. I wonder why. But so Linda's going to come in and she's going to hope to turn Twitter over in a profitable um, surplus. And so I will say that Elon, I think, was already off to a great start. I think I believe it's 80 percent of his company he fired. He retained 20 percent. Um, so all of the influencers who are doing a day in the life of Twitter and were taking naps in the pods and sitting in front of their private chefs, um, I don't think they're working for them anymore. And um, so that's that's what they got going on at Twitter. I am mad that I wasn't working there because naps and private chefs is my dream job. I mean, it was, I mean, and amazing. Wow. Um, the things that Twitter paid for. Also in news of Twitter, um, my man Tucker Carlson announced that he was going to be dropping his new show on Twitter, which... Um, my boy, Matt Walsh, Sweet Daddy Gang, represent. Um, he had just like left YouTube and was like, because YouTube, I'm not going to lie, y'all, y'all are haters, but, um, and you can't demonetize what's already not making money, which is this podcast. And so I'm not afraid to say it. Um, but they had demonetized um, Matt Walsh for his stances and beliefs on transgenderism which is a religion <laughs> um and they demonetize him so he's i he was like all right peace out i'm gonna go to a platform of free speech which had been twitter so um now tucker matt walsh this is like a whole thing and um tucker carlson's like who had recently gotten fired i thought he was gonna partner with james o'keefe still could happen you listen tucker you got time um Yeah, so they are going to be dropping bits and people are scared, you know, the AOCs and all that. They're afraid of what he's going to say now that he has a platform that's not going to refrain what he says. Wow, this is going to be fun. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm into it. Tucker, I think, made a really wise decision. I mean... It was against his will, right? That he was like kind of let go from Fox. But go partner with Twitter because you want to be where the money's at. And you know where the money's not? With Fox News. It's not in cable television. It's not in cable television. I think, it, you know, big key, you can see who's advertising. Majority of advertisements on all cable networks are pharmaceuticals. No one's paying for that ad space. That's it. Why? Because it doesn't work. Why? Because no one's watching. Expose them. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. Oh my gosh. No one. You don't have any good TV shows on. No one cares. 
No one, y- y'all haven't had relevant TV shows since maybe 2018. Maybe. I, I don't know the last time. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I can think of some things that they made us watch TV t- in order to get the update of some things. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even now, I mean, with the takeover of streaming, cable's just dead and news man i can't believe over the past couple of years just how sold out fox is and you would think that wisdom would tell you to go where the money's at mm-hmm. and money is behind free speech money is behind um truth tellers you know where's where the money isn't tell me jamie did you hear what budweiser's sales have dropped again I love the men. Thank you, men. Thank you for getting it together. The, those are the people who don't need to get it together. Unlike the women who are still may, having arguments on Tampa, Tampax's TikTok account. They still can't figure out what they want. But the men? Oh, good job, know. guys. Good, good teamwork. That's it. I know. I'm rooting for the men. Yeah, Budweiser sales have dropped 11%. Um, for the week, um, like two weeks ago, at the week ending like April 29th, Budweiser sales had dropped. Michelob Ultra, which was the third highest selling brand behind Bud Light, that was down 4%. And Natural Light, you, you're not going to fool us with changing like one word, okay? Natural Light was also down <laughs> 5.2% and then um, the company in total just plummeting, plummeting, plummeting so bad that bankers are drawing out from their partnership. This is the epitome of go woke, you go broke. Thank you, straight men. We love you. We love you. We need you. Thank you. Because they sacrifice, man. There are women who will not sacrifice their absorbency with tampons, but there are men who will sacrifice that, like their favorite beer at the end of the day, that cheap favorite beer at the end of the day. They'll sacrifice that. We can't even sacrifice our absorbency that we only need like for a week, a month. Let me tell you right now, it's rough out in these streets. You think I like not having always? You think I like it? No. But here I am suffering, suffering for good. I am not going to grow weary of doing good. Mm -mm. And, you know, do you think I like having tampons without a patented braid? No. No. That braid is very effective. It's a little bit rude that they patented what is a normal hair braid into a tampon. But here I am. I spent $42 on Garnu tampons, three boxes. And okay, I also got a sticker that said women, not menstruators. But still, $42 on tampons. I'm going to have to probably switch to Kotex U to make this sustainable. But I had to make a point. Yeah, I was I'm, like, I'm, I'm getting okay. conservative tampons. I Googled conservative tampons. That's right. Garnu, G-A-R-N-U-U, if you feel like making a point. That's right. I know there's a website out there, and I, I feel like it's come up so many times, but maybe you guys can Google this. Um, there is a website of a directory of conservative companies that you want to support. Like, it's a list of, hey, these are the companies that went woke. And now these are the companies that are conservative and may align with your beliefs. You might want to put your money behind that. I had to backpedal on one of my decrees that I made in 2012, where I put my foot down and I said, I will never root for the New York Jets again, another day in my life, because how they mishandled, mistreated and canceled, air quoting here, canceled Tim Tebow because how they they were just uncomfortable. The New York franchise was uncomfortable with the popularity he was getting as a Christian. And so they just like, they cut him. And then he went to the Patriots after that. And um, and then soon after that, thank God, thank God for favor. Because let me tell you, Tim Tebow is still collecting that check because now he's just like, he's a correspondent and he's commentating um, national football, the college football games. And he's making more money now than he would have as a quarterback because he's doing a lot of appearances and da da da. Thank God for thank God for favor. Let's just say that, okay? Mm-hmm. But in 
2012, I was like, I will never root for the New York Jets. Okay, hello, Jersey City, born and raised. We we didn't have football teams. We we didn't have a New Jersey team. We rooted for New York teams. I was Jets and Nets. So I was rooting for the Jets since I was a little, 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 little witty. And I was here. And I was out here rooting for Tebow. They cut him. And now here I am in 2023, almost 10 years later. Okay. And, um, yeah, my favorite quarterback on the planet right now, Aaron Rodgers, got traded to the New York Jets. And so now I'm taking back my decree. I'm taking I'm taking it back. Wow. And I will spend the money on a Jets jersey. I'm just putting that out there. I will have to be spending the money. I know some of you guys are going to be like, hey, I knew this girl. I went to school with her. I thought she said she would never root for the Jets again. And I repent. I repent. Wow. Um, I'm going to have to root for the Jets. And so. It's a big moment. That's a big moment, man. I'm just telling you. Ultimately, when you go woke, you go broke. Tampax will feel our wrath. Um, the wrath, maybe not as effective as Budweiser, but they will feel our wrath. I'm, and- I'm going to make a vow right now on this um, podcast that even if they do repent, if they backpedal, if they, if they go back, I'm never buying that patented braided crap again. No, that cultural appropriated braid. We will not be buying into that. <laughs> We will not. How dare you? First of all. How, how dare, dare you? you? Well, I have one more. Did you hear? Tell me. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm not like, I hate to report this. Okay. Okay. Um, Cause it's not good news, but the um, Marine who put Jordan Neely in a chokehold his name. Okay. We should be talking about this guy's name more. Okay. He's, he's not just a, a vet. He's not just a Marine vet, but his name is Daniel Penny. Okay. The hashtag should be running. His name is Daniel Penny. He's the Marine who put Jordan Neely in a chokehold to protect his fellow commuters. Okay. His fellow commuters Mm -hmm. after Jordan was um, making threats, being uncivilized, being um, unruly, making threats. And Daniel took his military training and put into action and was like, I'm going to protect these people. And as we said before, uh, as we talked about this before, if you for even a second defend Jordan's actions, um, that is your, you are, if you sit here and you defend, defend Jordan for even a second, you are forfeiting your right to understand what it looks like feels like smells like to ride a new york city subway you're admitting that you've never ridden one without admitting that you've never ridden one (laughs) yeah first of all that man is a hero yes he needs a medal not handcuffs and I am concerned as to what this will do to commuters in the future, because I have seen many times where there's that brave person that steps in and that person prevents a lot of harm and a lot of drama from coming to the subway car because they are standing up and be like, Hey, not okay. Pack it up. And if people feel like the hero is going to get arrested Nobody's going to want to be the hero. Nobody's Nobody's going to be safe. It's the most beautiful thing about New Yorkers is their, um, their desire to protect their neighbor. Yes. And let's not forget that New Yorkers, this was, I believe was actually started by Curtis Silva who ran for mayor and, um, these New Yorkers are fools for not electing him. Um, he started the, um, oh my gosh. The angels. I need to. I need to look this up. Is that like the citizen? Yeah, it's it's the vigilantes that um, protect the people of New York on the streets and on the subway. I love that. Guardian angels. Can't believe I forgot the name. They have the red the red jackets and the red hats. Um, they're like I think they're berets. And you'd see them on the subway and you'd feel safe because they were like, we are going to do whatever we can to protect our fellow New Yorkers. And this is back when the cops were not protecting New Yorkers. 
that this was started in the 70s. And sweet baby Curtis Silva, please follow him on socials. He's a delight. He is really looking out for OG businesses and the Mm -hmm. people of New York. And I'm just a little concerned about what's going to happen if New Yorkers don't feel safe to be the guardian angel, whether they're official or unofficial. What's going to happen when they don't feel safe to be vigilantes when those good people get arrested and bad people go free? And if those bad people in this situation had been free to do whatever he wanted to do, people would have gotten hurt. It would have been more people and it would have been people that I'm not, I'm look, I'm not going to say some people deserve to to die and some people don't, but some people, they make choices that they have repercussions and some people did not make those choices. And this man made choices that would actually cause some dangerous things to happen in his life, including death. Whereas the other people in that subway car probably didn't make choices that would lead them to be, I don't know, arrested 44 times. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, he recently pleaded guilty for assaulting a 67 year old woman in 2021. Um, I think he also recently had hurt like a young girl. Um, I think she was like, yeah, I think she was like seven. Um, like that, that could be, yeah. I mean, this guy, hurt her are, how? he's like a war criminal. Um, I, I don't know if they disclose how he hurt her. But the idea, and this guy, he was, like, only, like, in his 30s. And um, the example that we gave before is that, like, if a burglar was to walk into a 7-Eleven, um, especially if you're in Texas, if you were walking into a 7-Eleven in Texas, oh, well, let me make it more, let me make it more Texas-related. If you were to walk into a Bucky's, a burglar was to walk into a Bucky's and pulled out a gun and tried to rob the the cashier best believe there will be a Texan there who is armed and ready and if you want to have the shootout or if somebody wants to take out the burglar before the burglar takes somebody out and a Texan shoots that person and that person unfortunately dies it was unfortunate but it was not a mistake and it's definitely not involuntary manslaughter as Daniel Penny is about to be charged with and so obviously there are things that are um, justice system there are things obviously the justice system of this country is just bored okay you don't have enough to do mm-hmm. because for you to go after this man especially after like you guys have had months years decades of going after Donald Trump which is a whole nother a whole nother topic for a whole nother day but you guys are clearly bored you're bored instead of writing new laws to protect people you're bored y'all y'all need things to do go write new laws to protect this country that's an excellent point i feel like so many politicians are trying to make laws um about stuff on the ground that we already have laws about when we don't have laws to protect us in the new space which would be ai or yes um the social media space all that is new frontier that has no rules yes yeah that's where we need you (laughs) That's where we need you. And need, need I remind you, onlookers, on listeners, I don't know, maybe you got here because you saw the graphic and you thought, these people seem pretty chill. Let me check out their podcast. Um, I don't know where you are in your faith, okay, those who are listening. But um, a pro tip when it comes to social justice, social justice without the gospel is not justice. God is justice. He is righteousness. And in his kingdom, he establishes that righteousness. You can't have social justice without God. And that's what a lot of people are trying to, um, they're trying to rule this land. They're trying to um, dictate what is justice. That's actually why you have so much, they want their own version of justice, just like they talk about love. They want their own version of love. God is justice. God is love. Um, you can't have justice without the kingdom and you can't have a kingdom without the king and so uh, a good friend Dub Alexander says that a kingdom without a king is just dumb right so it's the idea that 
you won't have social justice reigning in this land without God. You know why? Because he's the standard of morals. And so is his mm -hmm. word. And so um, it's so weird <laughs> how these people think that they can dictate um, what they believe to be justice. Um, your justice does not work. Your definition does not. Just like as we have seen, your definition of love hasn't worked. It's only diminished over the years. Once you pansies started coming around with this love is love um, 15 years ago, it started diminishing what true love looks like. And you can see it in the songs. You can see it in the music. You can see it in how people treat each other. You can see it in the relationships. I mean, there are people who, there are like literal couples that think that they can be throuples. They think throuples is a thing. Um, very uh, simple breakdown of what a throuple is, is a couple of three people who think that they can fu function um, in a relationship because love is love. Well, sorry to piss on your parade, but love is not love. God is love. He's the standard of love. He's the standard of justice. I and we have an Go issue ahead. here with a circular definition. You can't define something mm -hmm. with the same word that you're defining. Right. 1000%. Yeah. 1000%. Um, I, the one thing I will, I will touch on this really briefly. We can expand on it later. Really briefly. My concern with running with that campaign, that slogan, that hand-me-down nonsense of love is love. 15 years ago, it was a problem. I want to say five, six years ago, I was having a conversation with a friend who was trying to run with the whole love is love narrative because she wanted to defend the fact that her um, child was going to be pursuing um, a relationship with the same gender. I said, what happens to that slogan, love is love, when a 56-year-old says, I want to be in a relationship with a 14-year-old, wh mm -hmm. where is your love is love social justice warriors then? Oh, no, that's not that's not right. That's not okay. Well, that 56-year-old believes that he's really in love with that 14-year-old girl that he met online. Mm -hmm. Where is your love is love then? Oh, so love is not love. You just wanted some slogan to slap on your indecency and just say that it is love and it doesn't work that way it doesn't work here it doesn't work in the kingdom because the kingdom without a king is just dumb and when you run with love is love and when you run with social justice without the gospel it's a kingdom with no king and so um that's all i have to say about that it's the unfortunate thing with daniel penny because as you said he should be hailed as a hero he is a hero okay he's he was the spider-man he was the batman that, that they needed at that time and um, he's not some vigilante who's just running around, but he was just defending people. Again, as I said before, it's unfortunate that a man lost his life, but there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And honestly, again, I think we need to give Daniel a medal. He made a decision in a high stress situation that probably resulted in the least amount of people getting hurt. And he did the right thing. Which I think is very militaristic in his training. It right? is. It's actually super militaristic. Because, gosh, when you're in the military, I'm sorry, somebody's going to die. And it better not be anybody in our team. Yeah, but you see how he, like, condensed, like, he consolidated the damage. Like, it's not like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take him and I'm going to fling him all around the subway. Like, he took him. He was like, hey, we're not going to do that right now. And, you know, somebody may have lost air passage, but it's what happens. With that being said, do you have an update for me? Oh, yeah. Hey, Wenny. What's up? Did you know mm -hmm. that Lou Engel is at present on the seventh day of his Israel fast? The seventh day? Mm hmm in seven oh, minutes so quickly it'll be the eighth day but right now <laughs> it's the seventh day um of the fast he's doing for israel and uh 
Mike Bickle mm. is in on it too. He's been putting out He's some content about the intercession that they're doing for Israel. And uh, they're going till the 28th. But right now, at present, seven days in, Lou Engel has not eaten. Oof. Oh, this just keeps getting better and better. I know. It's amazing. Man, I wonder what the fruit is going to, the fruit that's going to come out of that. I feel like things, you know, things shift when, when Louie goes on his, when his, he goes on his little fast fast. So things shift for sure. I mean, uh, they they are, they are fasting and praying for Israel and Israel's really crazy right now. You heard about like the rockets and all that stuff going on in Gaza. Things are going crazy. So mm-hmm. it was, it's about the appointed time that they chose to, to fast. So. I, I don't know what coincidence looks like. There's no coincidence in the kingdom, but I don't know what it looks like. The parallel of them choosing to fast and things have gotten intense in Israel. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. Do you happen to know when things started to get intense? No, but it only I only started hearing within the past week. Like I started getting the whole pray for Israel type things. And you know. well, um, for this whole week, this whole past week that you've been hearing about this, see seven days, Lou Engel has not been eating. So you see, I don't know. I mean, if something does start changing, we're going to have to tell Louie to eat because if it, if it started around the same time, mm-hmm. we're gonna gonna, need somebody's going to have to get him some bagel, some blocks, a yeah. pizza. I don't know. Something. I don't know what he likes. If he's fasting and is getting intense and not working, somebody get him a bagel. Clearly the hunger strike isn't working. No. But we'll see. He's got so he's got 21 days left. Um, so yeah, he's going through the 28th. So it looks like there oh, was 21 days that they set out. So got about two weeks left. Okay. Wow. 14 days. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Louie, praying for you. Um, Best of luck on your fast, Louie. I know. Jesus said, my my father's business is my food. With that, let's uh, (laughs) let's transition. So we have a couple segments coming up, um, a good theology, bad theology, and a get it together. Good theology, bad theology, we promised you from last time. Mm -hmm. Um, I did want to briefly touch on the idea of Elon Musk and just the the wild things that he's been doing with um, taking over Twitter. I can't believe it's only been six months. But um, it's something, and we, we also touched on this a little bit in the opening monologue. So if you're jumping in halfway, rewind, check it out. But the idea of spirit-filled believers and their authority and dominion that they have in the kingdom and how uh, I've been reading Luke 16 and I know I was like telling you that I want to expand on this more with the Lord and I want to do a deep dive. But the parable of the dishonest manager Mm -hmm. and how, how Jesus used that as a example of how the Lord will move through the secular world and and do something because if his kids aren't going to do it he's like i'm going to find someone who will and um it's crazy because like jesus intentionally used the word like he used dishonest like i mean i'm sure he has a lot of adjectives but let me just let me legitimize this by getting in the word and um pull up the verse I'm on my phone because, you know, we're in 2023, but the, you know, tangible word is also good too. For kicks and giggles, we're going to go digital. <laughs> in the King James, the, um, the, parable, the parable is called the unjust steward. Dun, 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 dun. So, okay, it's so crazy. So Luke 16, verse 8, it says, And the employer of this dishonest manager applauded him for acting so shrewdly. For the worldly have more sekel, and that's S-E-K-H-E-L, and that word means common sense. 
So um, says the worldly have more common sense than those who have received the light in dealing with their own kind of people. Um, now I say to you this, use worldly wealth to make friends for yourselves so that when it gives out, you may be welcomed into the eternal home. Someone who is trustworthy in a small matter is also trustworthy in large ones. And someone who's dishonest in a small matter is also dishonest in large ones. So if you haven't been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who is going to trust you with the real thing? And if you haven't been trustworthy with what belongs to someone else, who will give you what you what ought to belong to you? And um, I can't help but think about people like Elon Musk in this context. Because here's Elon Musk, who, as far as we know, okay, he's not a believer. You know, even some people judge whether or not he's system. Some people judge if he's like a, a Satan worshiper. I don't think he was a Satan con. But some people are just kind of like, are you sure? Because Elon's kind of sketch. I don't know. I haven't asked the Lord. Like, I know that um, people have seen images of him wearing like a costume that was like affiliated with a demon. Discernment is real. Okay. <laughs> a little funny thing about discernment. A, a funny story about discernment is I was on someone's Instagram. I think I told you the story, Jamie. I was on someone's Instagram like a couple months ago. And um, I'm scrolling. And this guy is like a respected leader, okay? I love the stuff that he does in the kingdom. He's all about rescuing children who are being trafficked or children are kidnapped. He's doing work in Washington, D.C. He's an amazing guy. I'm not going to drop his name because I'm not here to bring shame to his name. Um, but we're scroll I'm scrolling and I see this picture of Marilyn Manson. And I was like, oh, Marilyn Manson. And then I see this person's name. And I was like, oh, I wonder what he posts about him for. And you read the comments, like he makes a post and he's like, oh, this person had just been um, accused of sexual molestation of a 16 year old. Like, you know, the, 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 that demons are still going to be doing crazy things and like these evil people and da da da. And I'm like scrolling and I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting that he didn't do it. That mm -hmm. he didn't, that he didn't, that he didn't molest a 16 year old. And, um, I felt like it was a little crazy to say because I was like, you know, I don't know. I know he makes crazy music. I know he dressed really weird. He looks really weird. I know his selection of girlfriends had kind of been, eh. but I was like, I just don't feel like he did it. And I remember voicing it to you and just being like, I, I feel like he's an easy target because of how he looks, but I, I don't think this man did it. And then I want to say not even three weeks later, the news came out that the girl was, she said that she was put up to, um accusing him but he didn't really do it but she was told to accuse him because you know we we had um we had discipled this lie with the me too movement be believe all women and you should not believe all women but Did she, she like, who put her up to it no no because they probably would kill her makes sense right so she later came out and I mean like this guy he came and publicly dragged him and then another ministry which also um which their purpose was also to protect women and to rescue women and um a lot of what they do a lot of their ministry is focused on shutting down like um porn websites and all that stuff so I won't say their name but they're they're in it okay they also publicly shamed this man because they were just like, oh, Marilyn Manson, look at him, blah, devil, demon, blah, evil, wicked, right? And I was just like, I still don't think. And so I was so relieved that the news came out, not because like, you know, I don't need to be right, but in the sense of, I'm just so grateful that my discernment is on. I'm so grateful that the light bulb, the switch is on. And um, I'm just saying that's how easy it is to misdiagnose someone because you go you um you filter something through your flesh and your flesh would tell you oh yeah that guy he's definitely ill look at him look at his eyes look at his makeup and so it's so easy for you to be like oh yeah Marilyn Manson he totally did it but ask the Lord is that simple I'm not holier than you I'm not I'm not in keen with the spirit more than you I have same the same access to the spirit that you have I just ask the Lord questions and James, James four will tell you, you got questions ask because he loves to give wisdom. And so um, I say all that to say is that I know that people are just like, Oh, Elon, I think he's a demon. Um, 
I don't know that. But I, I, as far as we know, I think he acknowledges God, but obviously he's not like living for him. He's not spirit filled, all this stuff. It's interesting to see how the Lord has used him these past six months, used him and his wealth. Mm. Right. In light of Luke 16. And so I, I guess this is kind of open ended because, like I said, I have not fully, I have not fully processed this with the with the Lord. People love to use process. Pentecostals love to use process, and um, I haven't processed this with the Lord in entirety. But um, I think the Lord is doing something through the unjust. It's very humbling to say. Because like, here we are, we're ready. And we say that like, use me, Lord, until he asks us to do something uncomfortable. And then we back off of our Isaiah 6, 8. And all of a sudden, we're not saying send me. We're saying pick someone else. And um, the Lord is going to move through his people. And if he has to use an ass, as he has in the Bible, if he has to use an ass, he will use an ass. And if he has to use an unjust um, Stuart, as it says in the KJV, you will use an unjust Stuart. And so seeing people, oh man, I can't believe so many people were just like riding the coattails of Elon. Um, Sean Foy was like one of the main people who was just like, oh my God, Elon, Elon. Like when he bought Twitter, they're like, oh my God. But like, come on, man. Like spiritual believers should be like the first one. We should be in it. We should be the ones with the wealth who are buying social media platforms. Like Elon moved and did something because he was tired of um, he was tired of there not being equal access to truth. I'm just wondering why in um, in a world where we have spirit filled believers, people who hear the Lord so well, are we so small minded? about ourselves, God, and the way God would use us. Yes. And in that being limited to places where we do not have influence and where the kingdom does not have influence. And if our call is to bring the kingdom to earth, why are we not doing that using our authority and going into spaces and owning things? And that's what the enemy is really afraid of as Christians owning things. When we own things, we have authority over them. When we have authority, the de- like the devil, his demons, they lose authority. And I think there are a lot of Christians and it's because of the bad doctrine in the church. Yes. Like, oh, um, like, I need to be humble and not be um, seeking Wealthy. to have wealth or um, to be the boss or to um, do something like so many Christians, the majority of them who I talk to are like, they used to have big dreams and they're like, oh, I'm just like, I'm just so happy with just the Lord and this little dream. I'm like, you may be, but the Lord is not pleased with that because what you chose is actually something that puts you in a place where you don't need to develop faith in God. Yes. You don't need to stretch your faith in him to live the life that you're so satisfied with and that you yeah. think is so humble. Oh yeah. But maybe you need to humble yourself and get over yourself <laughs> and realize that despite the fact that you are in and of yourself undeserving of the call God has placed in your life. Let that take a back seat because actually you limiting yourself because of who, what you think you deserve is pride. Once again, we come up against pride when we are not in joy, when we are not in receiving mode. Oh, we are, yeah. When we are. Yeah. Pride when prohibits not, us from receiving. When we are not in receiving mode, we are in pride. Yes. Because we're only allowing God to bless us to the level that we feel like we deserve it. Yeah. Remember, Peter and, stopped Jesus from washing his feet. Mm-hmm. Oof, that's good. That's that's good. I know my left from my right real well. 
Um, and anyone who drives with me knows that. Um, uh, Lord, protect those around me on the road. Amen. <laughs> mm. That's amazing. But, I mean, we, we need to talk about this. Yeah. If we are not receiving and walking out the call, when we make our lives small, it's pride. Makes it about yeah. us. Yeah. Um, you, you, you applied a pressure point right there that might be triggering some people right now. And in Jesus name be healed. Um, but I think what you're talking about is this, you know, you're just like, oh my gosh, like what is your, what's your major malfunction when it comes to stewardship? Because you feel like the Lord will just give you like this whole, I mean, I wish I had coins around, but you know, you have a penny and you have a quarter and some people are just like, I'm okay with the penny. Oh, the Lord is so faithful. It's the whole just enough gospel, right? And mm -hmm. when the actual definition of the good news is, is of the gospel is the too good to be true, right? Good news. Well, I'll say this. We adopted this ideology through bad theology that has given us low self-esteem. Mm. And because we have low self-esteem, we don't believe we deserve to have this is where the heresy hunters come out of the shadows and go, oh, prosperity gospel. That's prosperity gospel. When like literally, <laughs> and I believe third John, is it third John or first John where he's like, I pray that your soul prospers. Like the idea that God is in your prosperity. He's, he, his desire is for you to prosper as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. And so we shamed the word prosperity gospel and we shamed money. We shamed the idea in first Timothy where it says like the love of money is the root of all evil and people who don't know how to open their word or read in context will say, oh, money's the root of all evil when it's like, no, no, look at this, look at this phrase. It's the love of money, which of course the love of money is the root of all evil because you can't serve two masters. Jesus even says that in Luke 16. Like you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and you, and money and money is more than just money. It's mammon. And so the idea of um, this just enough gospel, like when Jesus said in John 10, I not only came to give you life, but life abundantly. Well, what does abundant mean abundantly mean to you? Abundantly is not just enough. Abundantly is not like, um, I, I was going to get my coffee mug and show you, but it's actually disgusting right now. Um, because got coffee leaked all over the side, but abundantly, it's not just here's here's the mug and I'm, I'll settle for this much. Abundantly is overflowing, and so let it overflow in your life. And so back that up to the lack of presence um, in the sacred, um, well, the lack of dominance in the secular the secular kingdom. We don't step into it and conform the secular into the sacred because we don't believe we belong there. And so while we allow these people like the Elon Musks of the world who I bet you we can find a Christian, I, be I bet you we can find a spirit-filled believer who has, enough, who has as much money as Elon Musk, but it took a, um, an unjust steward, right? And the reason why he's unjust is not because he's beneath us. It's because he doesn't know Christ. And Christ is our righteousness. Without Christ, you don't have righteousness. He makes our unjust just, okay? So that's why it's called the unjust in Luke 17. In the KJV, it's called the unjust. Um, God will move among anyone. He will move among his people. But if you're not going to do something, he will use someone else. It even says in Psalms that, he will allow the rocks to cry out. If you don't know how to worship him, the rocks will cry out in your place. If the Lord can use creation, he can use an unrighteous person to move. And I'm sure there's tons of examples, one in the Bible, but also tons of examples. Look at how the queen of Sheba was wowed by King Solomon. And she's like, I actually have to submit to your authority because I'm so in awe 
I'm so in awe. And like, boom, she came and like gave him all her riches and whatever and just laid it on thick. But I'm in this thought process now of like, what are we lacking? Those who are lovers of God, what are we lacking that we don't believe we should be able to step into these areas? And we touched on it with um, politics and we're touching on it with wealth. Like we need to start stepping in. So I think it's amazing that Elon was like, you know what? I'm going to do something with all this money and I'm going to buy the social media platform and I'm going to make it profitable. But most importantly, I'm going to make this a place where free speech can reign. Now he, it's not, it's not a war zone. It's not a place that is not, um, it's not that it's not patrolled. It's not that there's no policies like, there are there is a structure in place on Twitter. Some people are just like scared, scared of Tucker Carlson being on there because you're like, well, no, he's gonna say anything. Now he has the freedom to say what he would like. It's not just that he can say anything. And so I would love to see Christians step into this more. Mm-hmm. I would love to see Christians step into a place where when they've had enough, hey, if we don't like Budweiser anymore, let's just launch our own beer company. Um, Jeremy from from the daily wire did it with hershey's Mm. every time he gets pissed at a world company he launches a conservative one and where like where are people where are the spiritual believers who get who will do that and can do that Mm -hmm. and there should be people who are doing that with even more creativity than people who are either a not spirit-filled believers or b maybe they're believers, but they aren't listening to the Lord. Think about the access we have to creativity. I say it once again, my ass, which is seated in heavenly places. I'm going to turn to Jesus and I'm going to say, what should we do about this? What should it look like? What's the strategy? And I'm going to get something amazing and out of this world. Yes. Praise the lamb. Yeah, I'm just excited. I mean, we're going for it. We're stepping into areas where, you know, it's not easy. Like at any day, half the things that I mean, I think because we're so small right now, like no one's noticing what we're talking about. And they're just like, okay, yeah, you guys probably only have like 30 subscribers, but like, check it out. Like, and we're grateful for everyone. I mean, we got we get a lot of views on YouTube, which praise the Lord. But um, because we started off so small, I don't think a lot of people are noticing what we're talking about but these are very much things that like huge platforms have been shut down from did you know lance while was taken off of youtube no yeah they shut down his, his freaking account so i'm just saying we're stepping into areas where like we very easily can get shut down but wait the Lord did not... where, where can we watch lance now um i think on his own website and then i know flashpoint is a thing um thank you kenneth copeland Ooh, we I'm, love the can. I want to get, do you remember years ago when there was this, like those shirts where it was like someone's face was the whole shirt. And yes. I had a friend who had one that was like Oprah and it was like her entire face was the entire shirt. Nice. Why don't, why is there not a Kenneth Copeland one? I'm not sure, but I would love to go to a baptist convention and wear a kenneth copeland hawaiian shirt have you seen those where like where it should be palm trees it's little faces and i would love to get a kenneth copeland one and just show up at a Whoa. conference wait a minute yeah because i've seen them on like on being advertised that you can get like hawaiian shirts with someone's face anyone's oh. face wait Ooh, maybe we should make this we're doing this 100%, we are doing this add it to the list and merch this Kenneth is gonna Copeland. be amazing. Oh, Kenneth Copeland. Um, yeah, man. So people are getting shut down for some of the things that we believe, some of the things that we say. They have fried bigger fishes. And what I'll say is this: um, that does not, it's not a permission for us to back down. And there is a thing called favor, but if said YouTube was taken, we just would go somewhere else where you could listen to us. People have had, I mean. They wanted to shut down Joe Rogan and they couldn't because Spotify was like, we're not letting go of this money. And so um, with that being said, that's why we step into these things. Again, people are just like, oh my God, like, why are you talking about culture? I don't want to hear about celebrities. Like, you're just gossiping. You need to get the skills (laughs) 
to be able to discern. And you may get that from listening to people like us. You don't only have to listen to us, but um, when things are happening, you need to be made, made aware. Now, and get it together, you can make it to all the way at the end of this podcast. There are some things that like we're going to talk about when it comes to media, and this is why it's important to talk about entertainment and culture and what's happening, what celebrities think, because they're indoctrinating your children. Um, and then you're going to be like, where the heck did little Johnny get this belief? And then you're just like, click, click, let me check his YouTube history. Click, click, let me check his Netflix. Boom, there it is. And so these people, if you let your children consume this stuff without your, um, with, without your knowledge, without your knowing, and then your children are um, adopting indoctrinated beliefs, you're responsible because you want to run and put your head in the sand when it comes to when it comes to cultural commentaries. You want to stick your head in the sand, and that doesn't work anymore. You can't do it. We talked about it a couple episodes ago that there's no neutral in the kingdom. The angel of the Lord came to Joshua. And Joshua was like, "Hey, are you on our side?" He's like, "I'm not. Even, I'm not even on your side." Okay, even if you are the righteousness of God, I'm not even on your side. I'm on God's side. You'd be lucky to be on my side with God. You'd be lucky. You thought. <laughs> you thought. You so, sure about that? Um, I think that's all I was gonna say because again, we're trying to curb the we're trying to curb the timeline of this podcast. We so got this. Go. We got this. Let's go to the next segment, which would be good theology, bad theology. <laughs> All right, so we're trying to really quick hit on this whole thing with Hosea because I was in a church service. Um, I'm not going to say what church, um, but I was in a church service where I heard, Jamie, I had heard the worst, worst rendition on the book of Hosea I have ever heard since coming to the Lord. Wow. Tell me about it. I think it was even worse than the Hosea movie. I was so hyped for the Hosea movie. Remember Sean Austin? 2012, dude. It was called Amazing Love, the story of Hosea. Yeah, I was just like, I mean, the the the, the preacher, preacher man, was just talking about Hosea. Of course, I had to I had to whip out the physical word for this one. Um, he was talking about Hosea, and he was just like. Oh, God, just the, you know, when people focus so much on the fact that she was a prostitute, and listen, like this guy had a story, and it was a great story about how the Lord had um, just redeemed his upbringing and his like how he came to this earth. I mean, his mother was a woman of the streets, and I think he connected to this Hosea story because of because of Gomer, and I appreciate that, but. We cannot limit the word to just our point of view. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, you most certainly will not and cannot limit your understanding of the word to your life experience. Oof, yeah. You cannot and will not. And so I just feel like if you limit the word to your life experience or to what it's like speaking into a situation you know about, do you really think you're going to land in truth? Because no. if you don't. If you don't know truth from your own experience, then how would you know truth from reading your through your experience into the word? Yeah, you're so right. Um, so the book of Hosea starts off and the complete Jewish, which is what I physically have, is all up in it. OK, so it straight up says like <laughs> he tells Hosea, like, go marry a whore and have children with this whore. For the land is engaged in flagrant whoring, whoring away. I mean, the word is like in here like four times. Whoring away from Adonai, from the Lord. And um, basically the Lord's like, yo, Hosea, Israel has been really unfaithful. And um, what I'm going to have you do is marry a woman of the streets to show Israel that they're like this woman and show them their whoring show them how they prostitute their love out show them that they have been unfaithful to me and so Hosea as a prophet did that because he's like I'm going to be obedient to God that's what Hosea that's what prophets do you know through obedience so his three kids not my people 
on No Mercy or Not My People and No Pity and then the first kid being Jezreel. So all Hosea is supposed to be is a type and foreshadowing of not only the redeeming love of God, but also not only how he rescued Israel is correlating to how Jesus rescued us, but also the story gets so much more beautiful that we weren't only rescued, we were redeemed. Jesus not only came to save us, but he also came to marry us. And I will walk us into that. So Hosea, obviously being the um, type and foreshadow of Jesus, a righteous man, moved in obedience, right? He was first commanded by God to marry a prostitute, a whore, sex worker, call girl, all the things, right? And I think the Lord intentionally wanted to use something that was offensive, like just the language, like you need to get in there. You need to understand it because I need Israel to see that they're just like this woman. And so um, she's unfaithful. Then in Hosea three, the Lord's like, go again, love this woman who's loved by another man in relations with another man. At this point, she's already an adulteress. And, um, even though the Lord, he loves, he loves Israel. I mean, Jesus is so faithful, so faithful. So it's just a Holy Spirit analogy of what the Lord looks like and um, how the Lord moves in his redeeming qualities, his rescuing qualities of who he is. I, I had to pause because I just feel the Lord. Um, the Lord is so sweet and he's so kind. And so just talking about good theology, bad theology, the bad theology is believing that Hosea is nothing more, is nothing more than just the story. Okay. This is what the guy was preaching that Hosea is, um, a mirror. The book of Hosea is a mirror of our relationship with God, meaning that we are the adulterers. We are the unholy ones. We're the ones who step out on the Lord. And Okay. If this man believes that the story of a follower's relationship with Jesus is mirrored by Hosea's wife to Hosea, what would he say to say a follower of Jesus in the book of Acts who joins the church gets baptized in the spirit, starts learning about his identity in Christ and starts going out and like seeing people get healed, saved, delivered, blah, 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 and keeps walking in that. And then, I don't know, maybe gets martyred for their faith. How does this story that applies to believers relationship with Jesus apply to that person? (laughs) Follow up. How does this apply to, I don't know, like a believer who's like a woman in the underground church in Iraq who finds out that she's actually loved and desired by God and valued by God becomes part of the underground church in Iraq. Right. Helps lead other women to Jesus. And then I don't know, gets like martyred for her faith. How does right. that apply to her? It doesn't. How does that bring life to what she's fighting for? How do, how does Okay, another follow-up. How does this apply to say, I don't know, like a girl who gets saved in her early 20s and through her relationship with the Lord, even though there are some like messed up theologies she experiences along the way, but even amidst that, proceeds to grow in depth and in holiness with the Lord And it just kind of keeps going that way because she just kind of keeps growing and hasn't really had a lap since (laughs) she just kind of kept growing deeper. Oh yeah. And just continued to do so. Right. How does that apply to her? How how does that apply? It doesn't. (laughs) I don't know who he's talking to. So the bad theology is believing that Hosea is just 
a picture of your unfaithfulness, you wretched soul, you're so unfaithful. You you go and you cheat on the Lord, just like Gomer has gone and whored around. That's you. That's the bad theology. The good theology would be believing that the book of Hosea is a type and foreshadow of who Jesus is and how he, as God had stood in the gap, okay, believing that Israel would turn around and be like, you know what? You guys may not have chose me, but I've chose you and I've, I've chosen you since the beginning of time. And I wanted you, Hosea, to go and marry Gomer so that you can paint a picture to my people, to my children of their adulterousness, of their unfaithfulness, right? I won't just allow you to paint this picture without giving you the solution. That's what God only ever does. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to be our solution through one man's sin, right? We had been made unrighteous through one man's overcoming, which was Christ. We have all been brought in. And so now we're just made righteous just as we were unrighteous through Adam. Now we're made righteous through Jesus. And so believing that Hosea is this beautiful illustration, okay? I know the book of Hosea ends a little bit on like um, kind of like a sour note, but don't miss the picture that the Lord is painting through this um, book, this type of foreshadow. I just, I, I like really want to drill into you that it is a type and foreshadow of what Jesus came to do. It's not so much about the adultery as it is the commitment that God had over you and how he's a pursuer. And even what he did over Israel, he wouldn't have did if he didn't care. If he didn't care that the Israelites were adulterous, he wouldn't have even painted the picture. If he didn't care that we were dead, we were once dead in our trespasses, he wouldn't have sent Jesus, but he cared. And even him sending Jesus was his pursuing of us. That was his wooing of us. Just as he had Hosea go and marry Gomer and go after her again and again. And so um, even the name change is a type and foreshadow of who you were in your past before Christ, before you were married, doesn't matter anymore because Hosea's kids had an awful name beforehand. You know, they're like, not my people and no mercy and even naming the first child after Jezreel. Um, And then after um, purifying their relationship and after reconciling their relationship, Hosea and Gomer renamed their children. And I just want to read a verse really quick in Hosea because it's very unfortunate that this preacher man did not touch on this verse. Very unfortunate. Um, okay. Um, so this is Gomer saying, Gomer, Gomer saying, I will go and I will return to my first husband. This is Hosea 2 verse 7. I'll go and I'll return to my first husband because things were better for me then than they are now. And then I'm going to fast forward to verse 14. Um, This is the Lord talking about Israel. But now I'm going to woo her. I will bring her out to the desert and I will speak to her heart and I will give her vineyards from there. And the Acor Valley, as a gateway of hope, she will respond there as she did when she was young, as she did when she came up out of Egypt. On that day, says Adonai, who is the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me master, for I will remove the names um, of the dead idols from your mouth. It, in the Jewish Bible, it's the balloon from her mouth. So I will remove the names of the dead idols from her mouth. They will never again be mentioned by name. When that day comes, I will make a covenant for them with the wild animals, with the birds of the air and the creeping things of the earth. I will break, I will break bow and sword sweet battle from the land. I will make them lie down securely. I will betroth you to me forever. He even had to repeat it. He says, yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in grace, and in compassion. He says in verse 20, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you will know God. And when that day comes, I will answer, says God. And so, the bride that he not only saved, but he married, okay? As as Gomer, even Gomer was like, I need to go back. I need to go back to my first love. Hosea is just a type and foreshadow, just a picture of the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God (laughs) and him 
pursuing us, wooing us back into his marvelous light, back into his arms, back us back into a relationship with him where he will secure us. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful to know that he not only saved us, like it's not just like God just had to save us. He saved us, but he claimed us as his own by marrying us, by slapping his name on us. We have a new name. We have a new nature. We have a new beginning, a new creation now as betrothed to Christ, we being the bride, him being the bridegroom. All Hosea is to us is a type and foreshadow of Christ rescuing us and marrying us. Don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for just knowing Gomer as the prostitute. Don't settle for knowing Hosea as, you know, the husband who just chased his adulter- uh, adulterous wife around. It's more than that. Don't get caught up on the not my people. Don't get caught up on the no pity, no mercy. Don't get caught up on, on all that. Get caught up in the heavenlies with who Father, who Father God is, who Abba is. Get caught up in the heavenlies with who Abba is and who Christ is as your bridegroom. Get caught up in the heavenlies with who you are as the bride, the children think, of Israel. Go ahead. I think too, um, Israel's story of going back and forth to God, Israel really, as a people, did not know God, have intimacy with God. And so it's easy when you don't have intimacy with someone, you're not receiving love from them to not be close to them, to not trust them, and to go off and find other people in a relationship. But just because Israel did that, that doesn't really reflect on a believer because believers from the moment they're saved have the fullness of God dwelling inside of them. Yeah. They have access to the spirit of Jesus at all times. Israel's story is not a believer story. Israel did not want intimacy with God. That's why they sent Moses they sent Joshua. Yeah. They didn't want to be talking to God. Yeah. They wanted that distance. You as a believer, you don't get to have distance. You don't have that choice because when you allow Jesus into your heart, you got all of him inside right. of your being. That's right. So Israel's story, your story, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see the connection. It's not, it's not working. <laughs> It's a, it's a big stretch. It's, you're going to need a chiropractor after that stretch. I don't see the connection. <laughs> you're going to need a chiropractor. <laughs> you stretch so hard, you're going to need a readjustment. <laughs> yeah, it's important to just um, understand the language of love in the biblical text. Man, just know that there's an ongoing narrative in every inch of the Bible, and it's God's redeeming love, his everlasting love, his faithful love. Also, okay, I'm so sorry. Just one more thought. Oh, go um, for it. When Hosea was like written, it's a prophetic book about Israel and God, as we just stated. Why did the modern church have to apply it to now? No idea. It already has a meaning. Yes. God sent the prophet to show Israel what was up. And that's it. Why did the church have to be like, and also this speaks to, no, no, no. You put that, put your own interpretation on it. It already had a meaning. That's right. And that's it. Why did you have to find another meaning? It's like so clear what it means. Cause God said yeah. it. Cause God said it. These, th- this is one of those times where uh, I, I do get, um, where I'm like, can we bring in the hermeneutics? Can we bring in the exegesis? Can we bring in the, like, this is the one time where I'm like, um, read the room. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? And so, um, yeah, that's the good theology, bad theology segment. Get that out of your, get the stinking thinking out of your mind. But the book of Hosea is um, nothing less than the beautifully illustrated picture 
of God's redeeming love, showing you that what he did for them, he will do for us through Christ. Let that be a type and foreshadow of not only God rescuing you, but marrying you, claiming you as his very own. The bridegroom came through our dead trespasses, through our unfaithfulness, he came. And even though we were faithless, it says in First Timothy, when we are faithless, he is faithful. And he came. For he cannot and deny himself. That's so right, because he cannot deny himself. I had to continue it. No, it's, it's good. It's bad. good. The whole the whole verse is good. The whole mm-hmm. verse is good. And um he he came and he claimed you. Okay? It's not about where you been. We know Gomer been all over the place. We it's not about where you been. But again, just don't settle for anything less than that. I was mortified. Mortified when I was hearing this rendition at church. I was like and the reason why was because you know, we're again, we tell you time and time again, we're not theologians, we're not like, you know, <laughs> eschatologians, like we're not, we're not all these things, right? Um thank God we're not because we would lose our faith. I was gonna we, say we, we would not be, be happy. We would be universalists. Um we, we don't tell you these things to correct people's uh theology to bring shame to them, whatever. We want you to see him and see him rightly. And you can't see the Lord rightly through distorted, broken, low self-esteem renditions of the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is his grace, his grace, his grace upon grace (laughs) Um, bestowed, given to you. Grace, all grace means is unmerited favor. And so the gospel is his grace. And so we're... Uh, and we can go into Galatians later, but where Paul has talked about like what the gospel is in Galatians one, he talks about like the grace of God. And so like when you're listening for gospel messages, listen for his grace, where was his grace in that? And when people are telling you that like God had to, you know, God had to save you because you mess up because you be acting like you're not his people. And so he be showing no mercy and don't listen to that doo doo gospel. And so we're just here with the good theology, bad theology segment to put you in the right place, in the right state of mind, which is the mind of Christ. See him and see him rightly. All right, so kind of have a little, maybe this will be like a unison get it together, okay? Okay. I stumbled across this video over the week uh-huh. on the interweb of um, this interesting conversation on a talk show, which I'm I'm hoping we're done with this season soon of like daytime television because no one's watching it. Or I come across this video Tamara, it has to be Tamara because Tia is not on daytime television. She Tamara's would. popping off. She would not. She would not. Is is Tia with is she remarried or is she just still rocking a divorce? I'm not sure. But because Tamara's married, married. Yeah. Yeah. She is. I know Tia during COVID actually, she was like irreconcilable differences. Oof. Yeah. Make marriages great again. Um, so is Tamara. What's that? <laughs> I'm trying. It's just the whole married part that I have to get started on. <laughs> Let's get to that part first. The subject was about our beloved um, iconic duo from the 90s. Mm-hmm. These two men have shaped a lot of our hearts brought us so many smiles may have been a little bit of a fashion icon completely completely and uh taught us how to bathe taught us how to laugh taught us how to be persistent friends like you know that reckless love there's no wall you won't tear down they these two men 
had showed us this. They had, they, they modeled this life for us in the nineties. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, for one, uh, as a nineties baby, as a nineties kid, I am offended that they would come for these beloved nineties staples, these gems from the nineties. And I think, too, in the way that they're doing it, they're invalidating friendship. Invalidating friendship. As a valid relationship. It's like the whole movement is just crapping on friendship and saying the only valid relationships are romantic and sexual. Can we just be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why Why can't can't we we be friends? friends? So I, yeah, completely invalid. You're you're one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And that's why people are a mess and they choose the wrong romantic relationships because they're not filled up in their friendships because yeah. they didn't think much of their friendships, so they didn't put the work in, and they didn't give it the attention it needed or the intentionality it it required either. Right. That's why they don't work on friendships. And if there was ever a day and age where people did not know how to be good friends, it's today. Mm-hmm. And changing the image of our beloved, of this beloved iconic duo is not helping anyone learn to be a good friend. Mm-hmm. You know, out of, out of all the courses that you see taught, like there's master's classes, like there's cooking, even like on TikTok, right? Like everyone's teaching everyone how to do everything. You can cook, you can sew, um, you can be a personal trainer. Everyone's teaching you how to lose weight. Maybe people are teaching you another language. You know, some people are teaching you how to scam. No one's teaching anybody how to be a good friend. They'll even teach you how to date, how you can land a girl, how you can keep a guy. No one's teaching you how to be a good friend. Mm -mm. We should probably start a master class, honestly. Let's do a master's class on how to be a good friend. If anyone could do this, it would be us. It would be us. How to be a good friend challenge. Mm -hmm. Three days. And then you could pay us later for the (laughs) master's class. How to be a good friend. Mm -hmm. How to find them. How to keep them. How to resolve conflict with them. How to have that legendary friendship. Legendary friendship. we have. Yeah, I mean, it's not that, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth the work. You put in the work, but it's yeah. really not that hard and it's very fruitful. So fruitful. I value you. You You're value me. Human. I love you. I adore you. I love you so much. I mean, we, we have gone through it in like mm-hmm. the best way together, like in our stuff, like the things that we've had, we've gone through it together. Mm-hmm. Like we never go through it, but, and maybe yeah. that's weird to some people. Mm-hmm. that you just don't know how to be a good friend. So you don't know how to keep a friend. You don't know how to maintain maintain friendships. You don't know how to sustain. A big word in the Christian circle is community. How to keep, I want to find my community. Mm-hmm. I have no community. I'm alone. And um, those people, it's so weird to me. I have noticed in the past couple of years that the people who cry for community the, the most are like <laughs> the worst contribution to their community. Like, you know, like they lie, they steal, um, they're abrasive, they're mean, they're manipulative, all these people, like, but they're the ones who are just like, I need community. Like, no, you're just looking for people to bully. No, you're just looking for somebody else to manipulate. No, mm-hmm. you just see this person as a pocketbook. You don't need community, you need healing. Mm-hmm. Or let's talk about how people use people to give them the attention that they missed out on as a kid. Yes. The validation that their parents didn't give them. Yes. Because if you were really filled up in that area, which should be filled up by God, um, because parents will fail at this, you wouldn't need to be all over the place in many different communities. I mean, just look at Jesus. He had three tight besties, one of which was his bestie bestie. And he had of those like 12, including the three besties, 12 of 
those who were quite close to him, but like really three who were really close and one bestie bestie. He did only have one bestie bestie. And if you look at my top nine on my phone, I'm sorry, for those of you who don't know me, I like talk about my top nine all the time. It's my like, these are the best of the best friends. And they're the only people that I text back immediately. Um, And up until I wiped my phone uh, a few weeks ago, I had 780 or 740 something on red text. So to be in the top nine is a place of honor. And I realized that top row, I was like, oh my gosh, it's just like what Jesus did. When you're healthy, it just sort of happens. You have the three bestie besties. One of them's your bestie bestie. And then the others who you keep quite close. (laughs) It's so important. The Jesus formula for friends. It works. It's biblical. The Jesus formula for friends. That's going to be the name of the challenge. Yep. People do this stuff. You know, they get on TikTok or they'll do stuff on Instagram and then they'll be like, you know, they entice you with an offer, sponsored post or whatever. And then they're just like, they sell you a class and no one's ever teaching. I mean, a lot of people, even music industry people like, oh, yeah, like you sign up for my my master's class. I'll teach you how to get your music noticed. How about good friendships? Be a good friend. People need it, y'all. I mean, and how many shows did we have back in the 90s that was teaching on friendship? Like, yeah. just how to keep a friend, how to be a good friend, how to call out your friend. You know, there were so many, like, 90s shows that were like, oh, Corey was drinking. <gasps> Come on, Corey, you're better than that. Actually, it was Sean who was, like, had the drinking problem. But, like, they were complete. they were calling each other out. Mm-hmm, they were. And you it know, was a fresh friends. Thing. We had so many shows. Now that I think about it, like, friendship and family were, like. On Full House. DJ um, really helped Kimmy out when she got drunk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think Stephanie helped Gia quit smoking. Dude, do you remember there was an episode? Was it Stephanie? One of them, maybe it was DJ. One of them went to school with a kid whose like dad was beating him. And like they tried to keep the secret. And then she told Uncle Jesse and then Uncle Jesse's like, honey, we have to get your friend help. And then she was like, don't tell anybody. Like, I was supposed to keep it a secret. And Uncle Jesse's like, we need to call the cops because if we don't, I'm going to do something to that dad. It was like such a good episode. I feel like this is unlocking a core memory, but I don't remember specifics. Or I'm going to send you the clip. Was. I'm going to send you the clip because she was upset because like she thought to be a good friend is keep your friend secret that mm-hmm. your dad is beating the crap out of you. And then she told Uncle Jesse, and Uncle Jesse's like, I'm calling Dyfus. Yeah, so, I don't know. So, like, it's just weird. I mean, we digress. But the whole point of this being brought up is because friendship is under attack, Mm y'all. And subject A is going to be the, uh, this case study here will be proof that um we people just cannot enjoy good friendships anymore mm-hmm. there has to be something more even i mean we could talk about it in another episode because this will take 18 hours but even guys and girls being friends why is it weird that a guy and a girl can't be friends like oh it has to be something romantic no i have really close guy friends and um i enjoy my close guy friends my guy friends are there's boundaries set that there are good guy friends and it's okay to be friends. Mm -hmm. People are looking for something that's not there as they did with our precious, beloved, iconic, historic Bert and Ernie. Tweeting out to coming out. Two big names were trending yesterday after news broke that they were maybe just more than friends. Bert and Ernie, y'all, from Sesame Street. Wow. Yeah. Ernie. The writer said that he suspected that Bert and Ernie were gay. He said that when he was writing the characters, he actually drew from things from his own same-sex relationship. But the home of Big Bird said that Mark made a big mistake. Sesame Street Workshop made a statement to clarify that Bert and Ernie do not have a sexual orientation and that they are simply best friends and puppets and nothing more. What are your opinions on this? 
Okay. Thoughts. <sighs> I think the statement from uh, Big Bird uh, about them being best friends and puppets. Can we just stop there? They're puppets. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen the interview where Big Bird was. <laughs> I want Big Bird on camera telling Look, us guys. from his beak to our faces. <laughs> they're best friends and puppets. I hope to be described that way one day. When people we describe are. this podcast, they'll be like, they're best friends and puppets. <laughs> and puppets. Puppets for the Lord. I was about to say. I was literally just about to say puppets. That, that's why we are best friends because we know these things. Of course, we would have we would have said that together. Um, ridiculous that you would come for Bert and Ernie and can just allow the bromance to be the bromance. I mean, guys are the ones who had to invent no homo because Oof. bros just couldn't be bros. If they want to have a slumber party, let them have a slumber party. Bert and Ernie happen to be roommates. Okay? I mean, the man was in his bathtub singing to, like, his rubber duck. Duck, rubber duck, 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 duck, rubber duck. Like, it's just weird to me that <laughs> this is even how many years later? Not to mention, okay? I don't consider us grown women because we are not grown folk, but these grown middle-aged women have to discuss something, have to discuss this topic that is endearing to us who actually have to grow up with it. They didn't have to grow up with it, okay? They were already maybe in college when Sesame, like this was our childhood. So you should let us define what we think Bert and Ernie were, and they were friends. And puppets. And puppets. How asinine, how ridiculous do you have to be to allow this thought to creep into your mind? I just think it's disgusting because it's like, who like looks at puppets for children and is like, let's make it sexy? Like, what kind of brain do you live in that you look Ooh. at a children's show and you're like let's get sexual about it who looks at puppets and tries to <laughs> who looks at puppets and tries to define their sexuality i don't even care about people so it's like just like pl like please don't tell me I don't want to think Who about cares? that part of your life. And I definitely don't want to think about it in any kind of inanimate objects life. Bert could be wearing a crop top for all I care. And I'd be like, all right. I mean, not my first choice, but like, if you want to do it, then like, by all means. Oh, so great. But anyway, like, no, I'm not here to define the sexuality of a puppet um, of two men who happen to share a house. Nothing about him singing to a rubber duck struck me as maybe he's attracted to men. No, because it was a show for children and children would have a lot of rubber ducks more so in their lives than say mine. Um, and they would be thinking about rubber ducks and it makes sense that a character they watched would also have relevance in their own lives for rubber ducks. So it's funny how you had to mention that the show is for children because um, the question was asked, what were their thoughts? And this is what the ladies had to say. As a kid, it was one of my favorite shows. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking about the genitalia of you know and, and, and what, what they were doing sexually as as a kid you know i was like okay they're 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 puppets but as a parent i'm focused more on what are you teaching my child yes are you teaching my child to love one another 
are you teaching my children how to be friendly and create amazing friendships? That's what really yeah. matters. I don't care if they're 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 brown, a yellow, orange, Numbers. whatever. What is the message that you are portraying? I hear what you're saying, but I disagree because they do care and your kids are learning. At five I, years old and at three years old, my daughter isn't thinking that, oh, okay. Let me finish really quick. No, all I'm saying is, I was that girl, I learned how to speak I'm English. I'm speaking from my kids and my experience. So I, you can speak from yours. Right, right. Okay? Right. So I'm just saying, Tam, that for me, I had to learn from them too. I learned watching Sesame Street to learn how to speak English. And Bert and Ernie were my best friends. I believed okay. in them, and I learned from them how to have a happy and healthy relationship. What's wrong? But did you no, care if they were, were gay or not? Right? But I learned how that relationship works. So when Sesame... No, immediately no. Okay, so two things. Not her trying to, like, soften the blow with bringing up the fact that she was an immigrant and was like, they were so precious to me because I learned English. Okay, of your Asian descent, okay, if I had to guess... Japanese or Chinese, right? Maybe I could be wrong. It should be Korean. Those big three, homosexuality, hello. You're not walking, you're not bringing that homosexuality. Like, I guarantee you, if your parents knew, of your Asian descent, if your parents knew that Bert and Ernie were gay, they would shut that TV off right now. She looks kind of Thai. Let's look at Jenny. Jenny I don't Mai. know what she is. Her name is, like, I had to look her up because she's so irrelevant. Jenny Mai. <laughs> she is like, who is she? Like, who is she? And she was like, she was. <laughs> Can I tell you how insincere she sounded when she was like, they were my best friends? I'm like, I, like, I you know. could hear it was a lie. Like, I know. In the way she said, I was like, you're lying. I you're know. Lying she did. You're... She tried to come hard with that. And the way she said it was really emotionally manipulative, too. So not only did she lie, but she intended to manipulate the way she said it. <laughs> Whereas Tamara was not concerned about manipulating or controlling anyone. Her mother's Vietnamese. Someone paid her to say this. Someone paid yeah. her to say that. She thought she was like really like thoughtful with her answer. I don't they think were she even thinks that. I best. think she doesn't care. I think someone was putting her up to it because she's giving manipulative, emotional lies. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of feeling like her Vietnamese parents would not be rocking with that. They um, wouldn't. They were my best friends. And you uh, you immediately knew when she was like, I hear what you're saying. You know she was not. Mm -hmm. No, the, the way she delivered it, I was like, when Tamara speaks, it's like she obviously truly cares, truly believes what she's saying, and it's based on her relevant experience. When, what is it, Jenny speaks – it's obvious that she doesn't care too much what she's talking about. She doesn't have relevant experience and she is just blatantly lying. Yeah. She thought that she had like clear, concise thoughts that she was going to be able to land like this blow of just like, um, because she wanted to be the voice of the people, right. To be like, Hey, Bert and Ernie being gay is totally okay. And everybody knew it. And that's not the case. And so um, it's like, it, we, it's scary that this day and age, we even have to defend the sexual orientation of puppets. But here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's it for our podcast episode today. I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure we're at the two hour mark. We have to be by now. <laughs> once again, once we're again. here defending friendship. I'm not about it. I'm not mad about it. Doing the right thing. It's worth the time. <laughs> I um it's worth the time. It's worth the investment. Like I said, listen to us on the on the road. Listen to us in your commute. Listen to us on your walk while you're cooking, while you're dancing. I don't know. While you're cleaning. Mm -hmm. Listen to us while you're cleaning. There's so many options of things to do. While you listen to us, that's what I do when I burn podcasts. Like, I'll be like, all right, let me, I'm going to do this. Let me put on this guy, that guy. Let me listen to these people. Um, so thanks for hanging with us. Mm -hmm. As always, we are on Spotify, Google, um, Apple Podcasts. See, I always say Apple Music. It's Apple Podcasts. 
we are on um, wherever podcasts are listed. We are there. Of course, thanks for hanging out out with us on YouTube. Thanks for checking out the website. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and share. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. And until next time. Be happy. Stay holy. Oof. And we will see you in the next episode. Which will drop soon. Yes. Around our 90 hour jobs. Howdy. <laughs>